Hey everybody and welcome to a dynamic wild ride with Steve-O. We've got Fred Armisen. This guy isn't just dynamic, he's incredible. He does it all. Music, acting, comedy, the impressions. My lord, at the end of this episode, is he going to blow your mind with the impressions? He's going to take you all over South America and it's just really remarkable. He's uh, a fan of mine, which is super epic. He loves Jackass, and um, he might have destroyed Portland. Um, I'm not going to say he's responsible for all of the terrible things that happened in Portland, but you're just going to have to judge that for yourself. It's juicy. It's crazy. This guy's insanely talented and hilarious. So without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so we're ready to dive right in. All right, great. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, Fred Armisen. Hi, hello. Yeah, dude. How's it um, going? It's going great. Thank you for joining us in our humble van. Uh, I was impressed with it from the outside. It looks really great. And I always wondered, what, hey. What well, uh, happened to our sign? You know what? It was green. That's all right. I don't mind it like that. Oh, there, there we go. Maybe it's when you shut the phone. <laughs> okay. We were just saying earlier that uh, we met um, in Vancouver. We I did. thought it was Seattle for some reason, but you're right. It's for Just for Laughs. Yep, the Just for Laughs. You had a show at the Vogue Theater, as did Whitney Cummings yeah. and me. Yes. We all played the same theater. I think we all sold it out, and we all had a blast. Yeah. Because uh, I, I think... Yeah, that's how they scheduled it for Just for Laughs. Yeah. Like we were just there for a while. It was a nice place, too. Such a big deal for me to have been embraced by Just for Laughs. You know, like, yeah. I get not, not a lot of love from the entire comedy community for having crossed over from my jackass stuff into stand-up. Is that true? I, maybe I'm sensitive and I perceive it more than it yeah, is. Yeah, I think it's a perception. I think that uh, I, I'm sure that's not the case. I definitely care passionately about putting on a great show. Yeah. And um, I'm authentic in my approach to my comedy. And it meant a lot to be at Just for Laughs to me. I would say also, I don't think... <clears throat> I would say that I think Jackass is, isn't something that's like... Uh, separate from stand-up comedy i feel like in general in the community community not that you need me to tell you this but uh i think it's generally like very accepted and you know well thank you did, <clears throat> did you feel that way when you went from music to acting um yes but i wasn't as huge as jackass 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 is like a major part of life you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, when um, when you got into television and film, it wasn't like, oh, here, look at this musicians over here. Yeah, no one was now. like, no one was like, uh, oh, how come you're not going to play drums? You know, right? It, it, we just weren't. Um, we didn't have enough of an impact for it to make a difference, really. Yeah. Did you bring your uh, music talents and 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 performance into Saturday Night Live? Yeah, even even in my audition. I had timbales, you know, like the Tito Puente, uh, yeah. those metal drums. Um, in, in my audition, I had those, and then the first time I was on, I had them, and for this character, and then all the way through, uh, there, there, it's almost like I would just work it into a sketch that I was playing drums or guitar or something. It's yeah. almost like, um, like a crutch or something, that, ah. and not like a crutch, like in a bad way, like oh, I didn't know what else to do. It's just that, <laughs> that's just what um, came most easily to me. Did you have to audition for Saturday Night Live? Oh yeah, big and time. Did you do your your impersonations? Was that yeah. the main one? And then you incorporate that with your drumming too? Yeah, so it was like it was like they asked me to do impressions and then some characters. So I did that at a club. They all show up and I do it at this club. So it was two impressions, two characters, and then I did it again at, you know, at the studio of SNL. Yeah. And I that's the part I couldn't believe was even happening. For the, me to even be audition. in that room was insane. What yeah. impressions did you do for the audition? I did Sam Waterston from Law and & Order uh -huh. and Vin Diesel. 
<laughs> so Sam Morrison was one that I'd been doing anyway. And then Vin Diesel was more like, I thought, oh, I should find, think of someone really famous so that at yeah. least, it, you know, I'm not doing it just anyone to, you know, whatever. Like, just, yeah, know. I was going to ask you, which Vin Diesel did you do? But he, he's the same in every movie he does. <laughs> it's yeah. like Keanu Reeves. I, like. I did it just for the audition. I was like, okay, I'll try to learn him. And there's a thing he does with his mouth, you know, there's this kind of uh, <laughs> quality to the shape of his skull or something that uh, I thought, oh, I think I can handle that. So I just did it quick enough that it didn't have to be like, you know. Uh, am I clear that you're attributing the way Vin Diesel speaks to the shape of his skull? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think there's a way that... That it just reverberates or something that, um, you know, yeah. It's not a, it's not a put down of it. I mean, he's got a great skull. But, yeah. I just think that, uh, <laughs> but I think there's just something in there like, the, you know. Sure. Just, Did you walk out of that audition thinking you killed it? I, wa I you know, there's a, a sort of line of auditioners, just a few. Um, and someone called me back from the staff of SNL. Like, can I talk to you for a minute? And that, I knew something was up. Yeah. I was like, oh, I think something's starting to happen. Just because she had some questions. And someone asking questions is a little bit like engaging. Mm -hmm. So right. uh, I was like, oh, something's about to happen. And then later that day they called me and, and I knew my life was going to change. And then it did. It was... I was like, oh, I think my life's going to be really different now. And then it, it did turn out that way. That's right. That's when you had, to, you had a landline. You got to stay around your landline all day. You're like, fuck, <laughs> it dude. was It was 2002, and I did have a cell phone. Ah. But it was one of those, like, uh, Nokia ones. And we should mention Nokia. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> uh, shout out to the snake yeah. game. You know, the ones that looked like almost like an egg. Yeah. A black egg with the bottom that's kind of flat. Uh -huh. I don't think there was any texting back then. I think there yeah, was. You but had it, was it like hit three, three, yeah, three yeah, times yeah. and two, two, you know. I think I didn't know how to do that yet. Or I wasn't like, some people were really good at that. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so Saturday Night Live, um, I, I think of you more as the Portlandia guy than Saturday Night Live. So yeah. which one do you think uh, you're most known for? Uh, it depends where I go. But I, in a way, Portlandia, because it's more of my signature. Yeah, meaning like it's more of sketch, yeah, more sketch that was like where me and Carrie are the main people. Um, but you never know. I mean, sometimes, I'll, you know, I'll go to some place and they'll just say SNL. So it just yeah. depends. But Portlandia is more like focused. That's like a more focused. If someone recognizes me, that's more like. Uh, and it's yours. Made, and it's it's more mine, yeah. Right. Is it true they try to blame the like rising real estate prices in Portland to your show because everybody wanted to move there and Yeah, I guess I it's hard to tell, you know, because like even if somebody said that, I don't know if that's how everybody thinks. Yeah. But uh um I Because they had billboards that said, you know, home of Portlandia and thinking they all yeah, the locals probably, were they, I'm sure people weren't excited to see stuff like that i just people get I, su I suppose protective of where they live yeah it um if someone made a show about uh this part of la i guess you know it yeah just, but um but i i still don't know that like a tv show we were a little cable show yeah can really affect real estate i i, I don't think that that's right we had that much power but whatever you know the show's done and Portland as a city has moved on, so so moved who knows? On. Yeah, they did a show about <laughs> yeah. heroin and methadone you know, yeah, on the right. street. It's like yeah. they blame you for that too. Um, it, it's funny that like how fast time goes, though. Like that, you know, the, the that show would be in a discussion like that, and then years later, it's just it's just like a a newspaper page turning. Mm -hmm. um, I went, I went, and I worked on a movie there. Uh, I don't know, maybe four years, five years ago or something. And the girl who was working was young, was like, you know, signing me in for whatever, I guess for COVID tests. So I guess it was like three years ago was like, have you ever been to Portland before? <laughs> so in my ego, I'm like, okay, I'm back, you know? Mm -hmm. And then to her, she's, it's, you know, t that's how fast I don't, yeah. I don't need to explain how fast time goes, but you know what I mean? Like, sure. 
I don't know. In, in your ego, you're like to the center of this, like yeah, of course, this thing. And then, for sure. Uh, but in regular life, people are like, we could care less. I, she clearly had never, didn't even hear, ha, hadn't even heard of the show. Yeah. You know. Yeah. The uh, it's Portland that is the only place in America that has decriminalized all drugs, right? Like, that's really, is that true, or did they do wait that decriminalized like, heroin and I think crystal meth? Yeah. Yeah. Crystal meth, the whole deal. Like, yeah, I that think, case study's not doing very well. Right, I think that they've, they've like uh, decriminalized it, if not just legalized. Well, it. I saw yesterday that New York City was putting out vending machines that had you can go and get a, a, a crack pipe, you can go get like tin foil <laughs> syringes, wow. and like I, somebody was posting that. And it was pretty. Now, impressive. what do you think the reason behind that is to like stop the crime rate? <laughs> yeah, like it's probably like that sort of Dutch, you know, ideology right, of like we're just going to decriminalize yeah. everything. Although I don't know what their laws really are, but I think there's that's probably like a, a version of it. We were there uh, at the beginning of this year, and it was just alarming. It was truly alarming. Just everywhere you looked, people yeah. were yeah. holding lighters under tin foil and in you broad know, daylight like, too. Broad like, daylight, not even in, trying to hide. Is this it. Portland? You're saying Portland. Yeah. Portland? That's the way it was when I was there in the '90s. I went through as, when I was in a band, and people would say like, hey, you know, it's a kind of a druggy place. Sure enough, exactly like you described, or just lighting like little pipes and stuff right yeah. in front of um, the Satyricon where we were playing. Yeah. What like, band? Wow. Like daytime. What That's band was that that you were trench with? Trench mouth. Trench mouth. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. So, yeah. I mean, I it was a great city, but it was very that. That's the main. That was the headline when we showed. Yeah. Up. I wish it was. I mean, I love Portland. It's probably like top three favorite cities, minus all the crime, because it's such a beautiful. It's I love gorgeous. the weather. I love the how the, all the buildings are stacked up on the river right there. And yeah. I, I still have. I have a place that I go all the time. Mm hmm Or frequently, but um. It's the, there are parts of it that are beautiful. Mm -hmm. And also, I go to other cities and there's like some, LA has some pretty yeah. messed up areas. Sure. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. All, you know, not just downtown, I mean, all over the place. And San Francisco, obviously. Hollywood's Hollywood is pretty is terrible. Crazy. It's intense. Yeah. Hollywood is like, I, I drove down recently and there's people who are face down. You know what I mean? Like sure. their whole body is like on the ground yeah. with their feet yeah. facing up. Like not just messed up, but just like flat out. They had to remove some of the porta potties in Hollywood because people were just constantly ODing in there. <laughs> oh my God. You know? Yeah. I, I just don't know how that works. I don't have any answers. I don't know. Like, right. I, I don't yeah. know. The and it's crazy because like you hear, you hear stories of Hollywood in the forties and fifties and it was like clean everywhere. And you're yeah. like, you're walking around where all the stars on the, the, the Hollywood Walk of Fame are. And like, that's where people used to take for like a nice restaurant and like yeah. go see a show. And yeah. it's like this place where there's tents set up and the, la and the, yeah. the, the ladies yeah. pissing in broad day. It's crazy. Yeah. Where do you live? Where are you? Uh, I live by Universal Studios. Okay. And so you then, get to see, yeah, yeah, but I grew up in Pasadena and it like, I mean, it, it's crazy because some places got better. Some places got worse. I, I remember when I grew up, like Highland Park was like a no, no. And <laughs> you know, b b property values were like 80, 90,000. Yeah. And, and now it's the $1.6 million houses. And you're like, man, in high school, yeah. I, like the Bigfoot Lodge, you yeah. couldn't go down there. So they called it a no, no. They're just, no, they're just like, <laughs> like, be careful because like you, it's a rough neighborhood all by Dodger stadium, the whole area. And now it's like getting gentrified and, you see people walking around. It's That's bad. so funny. When, when I grew up in New York, I just interrupted you. You're about oh, to. No, no, it's fine. Yeah. It's all uh, good. You know, I actually have a weird satisfaction in being interrupted because it's been so important to me to improve my conversational etiquette and not interrupt people, let them speak. I think I've been getting a lot better and that's very satisfying, but nowhere near as satisfying as taking a very complete and healthy dump with my squatty potty. What makes it a complete and healthy dump if you're pooping with your feet on a squatty potty? It's because that raises up your knees, it, it gets your body in a position which is the same as 
squatting. And that's how we were intended as human beings to poop is squatting. We were not supposed to sit on toilets. That's not our DNA. And when we're squatting, then all of our plumbing is in the right position for a complete evacuation. And that's why it's just plain healthier to use a squatty potty. And if you go to squattypotty.com slash Stevo, you can get 20% off your order. Now, to be clear, I've been using this product as long as I've lived in this house, which is just about an entire decade. So I've been a loyal customer long before I was in a business relationship with this company. I'm proud to represent them. I implore you to take healthier dumps. So one more time, go to squattypotty.com slash Devo to enjoy 20% off your order and much more satisfying and complete dumps. Now, let's get back to it. I was just going to say, I'll make this really quick. It's not even that exciting. But when I grew up in New York on Long Island, same thing. There was a no-no area, which was anywhere below Avenue A. So they're like, you do not go below Avenue A. You were just... where? where what district is that? That's like Lower East Side. So there's, there's like the village. And then as you go, you know, there's like First Avenue. As the numbers get lower, then yeah. it starts going Avenue A, Avenue B. That was like... Even saying I went to Avenue B was like, oh, that was a, a war zone. And that's like uh, in the 90s? 80s. 80s? Yeah. What was it like taking the, the, the subway in the 80s in New York? Was It was it was like, exciting. It was it was exciting because um, you really felt like, oh, I'm really in the city. Because it yeah. was noisy. Like, like it, something about it like really felt like I'm not in the suburbs anymore. Yeah, I always feel like it's a TV show, like, you know, the gangs are walking on one end and the other, oh. and they're meeting up to fight or something <laughs> yeah, like that. I never that. saw any like of that. that. No, I didn't see any of that. Yeah. Um, a- as a punk rock musician. I mean, I, it just feels counterintuitive that you <laughs> were this prolific punk rocker yeah. when you seem so soft-spoken, mild-mannered. Like, what were you different in Trench Mouth? Were you like a tough guy? No. It's the kind of punk rock that I grew up on was the kind of soft-spoken punk rock. So, like... Hugh Cornwell of the Stranglers or Captain Sensible, um, even Mick Jones, even though they had, you know, strong accents, I felt like they came up with sweet melodies and were like basic, there was something sweet about them and positive. Even Mark Mothersbaugh from Devo is kind of, he's kind of soft-spoken. David Byrne, who I'll put in the uh-huh. punk category, is like a mm-hmm. sort of soft-spoken guy. So somewhere in there... I found like a voice of punk rock that resonated with me. You know who else I think is very soft spoken? Perry Farrell. Totally. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Bob Mould too, like when he talks, is just. <laughs> do, uh, yeah. do we consider Elvis Costello to be punk? It, I, yes, I do. And, and is do, he kind of. Yeah, and he's like brainy. Yeah. He's brainy in, in his own way, soft spoken. That's, that's always a good discussion, like who people consider to be punk but I, but then I try to do the evidence I try to think well he produced the specials he was like one of the first people you know Elvis Costello to, to be on American TV and stuff representing punk so I always think like that that's that's a, definitely a punk yeah do, um, do you if, if you if I were to ask top five punk albums of all time top five punk albums of all time I would go Sandinista by The Clash. I would go Dig Me Out by Sleater Kinney. I would say um, New Day Rising by Husker Du. Um, then I would say Eye Against Eye. Bad yes, Bands. I was going to say that. Right? Thank you. <laughs> I didn't want to sound dumb, but I was like, can I get Eye Against Eye? They're so amazed that you said that. I mean, they might, bad brains. Eye they, against eye. Bad brains might just be the the greatest punk band. Man, like every time you hear the that. bad brains, you're just like, that's like above everything else. You no matter yeah. how much I love all these other bands, they're. Um, but what, oh, and I was gonna say number five, the Damned, uh, the Black album, but yeah, bad brains. What they don't they deserve like. 
a Nobel Peace Prize or something, or they, they yeah. deserve and something bigger than the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Someone's got to come hmm. up to them. Like, I can't, uh, bo- I, I wonder what that was like for them to start, like, right. completely just sort of isolated and just getting into this scene. I don't know. I, Who would you say are your top five albums? Um, I, I had a lot of, um, influence with like the New York straight edge hardcore. Oh yeah. So, uh, you know, I'm gonna like probably lean into the gorilla biscuits a oh, little bit yeah. there. Yeah. Um, you know, that, that first gorilla biscuits, it was an EP, but They're I just great. think yeah. the big mouth and hold your ground, all that, like that was a big deal. Yeah. Um, yeah, dude. So, uh, Gorilla now, biscuits. I think like they just recently got back together or something, or like they recently did something. They, they've done some nostalgia Gorilla Biscuits yeah. touring. Where does Fugazi land? Fugazi, they're way up there. Way they, they, you know, they're just yeah. That uh, was it. The f- thirteen songs album 13 that songs, had waiting yeah. room on it. Yeah. That 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 I think that would make my top five. Did you did you open for Fugazi? Yeah, a bunch of times. How were those shows? Oh, incredible! I mean, and then also you learn about like what bands are like as people. So as we got to know Fugazi, it, it, there's like a you know not rock star way of doing things. Nothing wrong with people acting out like rock stars. That's fine. Mm-hmm. But we liked as an example of them not asking for too much from the world. They right. just wanted to play a show, and that was it. They wanted to play their music. And they weren't talking about, you, you know, how, th- how they're going to do their next video and who they're opening for. It was just a sort of, they were, they were happy where they were. And that's like a nice thing to see. Mm-hmm. They insisted on keeping their ticket prices at no more than $10. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Well, back then it was $5. They had $5 oh. door price and I'm, I'm sure it yeah, there's a there's an interview with uh, Nirvana back in the day when they are you know, talking about how... Um, so, you know, some of these bands are charging like fifty, sixty, seventy dollars for oh, yeah. for concert yeah. tickets, and they're like, "Who's charging that?" They said you know, Madonna. The, Madonna. Yeah. yeah. And they're like, "Are you kidding me?" I know they kept it at like five, ten dollars. You know. Yeah. So, did you ever tour around with uh, see Nirvana in the mix in the no, 90s? No, no, no. We missed it. Yeah. We were sort of not in that scene, and plus they were so huge. It's so funny that back then Madonna was like the biggest like reference point of success mm-hmm. that, that Madonna always just came up of that would be like you know otherwise you're gonna be like a Madonna or you know <laughs> nothing against Madonna I'm just saying that it was just funny that like in the same way that we say like Taylor Swift today yeah Swifty mm-hmm. yeah Madonna was like the reference point of you're, success you're acting like more a than, more than Michael Jackson uh yeah I wonder I think you're younger than me you must be I am. I was born in 1974. Oh, yeah, you definitely are. I'm born in 1966. Yeah. When you said Gorilla Biscuits, I was like, ah, oh, I see where you are. Yeah. <laughs> you guys both spent some time in Brazil growing up. What? I spoke my first words in Portuguese in Rio de Janeiro at six months old. What's the story? I, I was born in England, and um, my family moved to Rio when I was six months, and moved to Venezuela when, when I was two. Uh, Connecticut when I was four. My what? dad worked for American multinational corporations. What's the company that he worked for? Uh, at the time, he uh, worked for Pepsi. He was the president of Pepsi Cola Brazil. That's incredible. Um, <laughs> uh, my dad worked for IBM. That's okay. why we were in Brazil. That, but for me, it was like second and third grade. And my mom is from Venezuela, so we were there wow. a whole bunch of times. Wow. It, I spoke Spanish in nursery school in Caracas, Venezuela. <laughs> <laughs> to and, think that you've even been to Venezuela, it right? blows my mind. And, uh, it, it's, it's, a, it's a sort of embarrassing but funny fact that I learned to speak three languages fluently by the age of, I think, three, and forgot two of them completely by the age of five. <laughs> but that's so early that how can you... Understood, mm-hmm. and while that it's it's uh, sad and depressing and and kind of embarrassing, but also they say that by learning multiple languages, um, you know, when when you're very very young, yeah. you develop more of your brain. So even though I lost those two languages, um, I, I 
arguably operate with more of my brain than had I not learned them. Definitely. And what's even more fascinating is that when I was in summer camp at the age of, I want to say 11 years old, there were some kids who spoke Portuguese at the summer camp mm -hmm. and, and they, 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 I woke up in the morning and they said, dude, like, uh, I mean, they didn't say dude, but they were, <laughs> they were very excited telling me that in my sleep I was speaking Portuguese. I have no, like... It was in there somewhere. Exactly. I have no access to it, but it's in there and it came out in my sleep. <laughs> speaking That's pretty Portuguese. incredible. Yeah. It, it, wow, we've been to the same places like you know years apart but in our youth like yeah that's, that's so i don't crazy. remember that's uh, really early brazil or venezuela where in brazil were you rio de janeiro wow and i went to an american school there and there were brazilians there too and every time we spoke english the way they'd make fun of us is you know we'd be speaking in english saying whatever and then these kids would be like that's how they made fun of <laughs> our, our language. That's what it sounded like to them. That's funny. That's <laughs> great. At what age did you find out your dad was Korean and not Japanese? Oh, recently, like maybe five years ago or something. So your whole life you thought you were half Japanese? Not half, a quarter. My dad is a quarter German. Uh, my dad is half German. Yeah. And half what we thought was Japanese. Mm -hmm. And it turns out that my grandfather had to fake his nationality when he lived in Japan. He's Korean, but he pretended to be Japanese because there was so much racism against Japanese people that he, he changed his name and everything. That's Isn't so that crazy, crazy? To, yeah. be, to be indiscernible, you know, to have there be no way of telling apart, but intense hatred. Uh, yeah. It's, uh, that's like, it's crazy. That's like how, how crazy it was in Rwanda. And, yeah. Uh, Why, what happened in Rwanda? They had this, like, they, they, they split everybody into these two groups where there was nothing different between these two groups. What were they called? The Tutsis? Tutsis and, Tutsis. Hu and uh, Hutus and Tutsis. That's right, yeah. There was, they, it was just, like, some crazy... While you were there? No. We were there in 2003 or four, 2004. And... Um, they were like just amputees, like it was it was gnarly. Mm. They had like a hundred days of just genocide, and and for again for no discernible difference between these people and and the hatred, it's crazy. Uh, how does it happen? That's such a dumb question, but I'm, it's incredible that they're like this close, and then right. somehow, I mean, I understand there's differences in religion and stuff, but I'm always amazed, especially with that. You know, it makes me, you know what, more than anything, I feel ignorant. I'm like, I have no idea how all right. that stuff starts. It, I mean, <laughs> it stemmed from the, the Belgian occupancy of, uh, of the country of Rwanda. They, um, you know, and when it actually came to be, it was a propaganda thing with these like loudspeakers, like uh, blasting. You know, on this day, uh, this is going to happen. And, and it was just, it's crazy how people will, you know, can, can be influenced to do such, such awful things. It's, it's funny that they're never suspicious of loudspeakers. Because loudspeakers, <laughs> they look so like propaganda. Right. They look like propaganda. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. And then God. people still follow it. They just, I, it just looks like trouble. Some things look like trouble and some things just are trouble. Like all the plastic in the ocean, destroying the environment, killing the wildlife, it's gotta stop. And you know who's stopping it? The good folks at Liquid Death. That's right, they put all of their healthy beverages, sparkling water, still water, flavored sparkling water, teas, all of it comes in infinitely recyclable aluminum cans. And did you know that like 70% of all aluminum 
gets recycled, like the, the success rate for, for recycling aluminum is phenomenal, unlike plastic, which is destroying the world. And I'm just in love with this company. They've got all of their cans designed to look like beers. They love it when little kids get in trouble with their teachers because their teachers think they're drinking a beer. I mean, everything about this company, all of their social media, all of their merchandise, it's just punk rock as hell and I love it. They're trying to save the world and I want you to join us. So if you want to get 20% off of your first hilarious liquid death merchandise item, your first purchase, 20% off for the listeners of the Wild Ride Podcast if you go to liquiddeath.com slash Stevo. You can also get all of the healthy beverages on Amazon and from local retailers. Get on board with Liquid Death. I love them. I support them. And I think you should too. So one more time, liquiddeath.com slash Stevo. And let's get back to it. I watched the show. I downloaded it on iTunes. It was uh, came from A and E. Was on iTunes about the Jonestown massacre. Oh boy, that was uh, another um, example of loudspeakers doing oh, yeah. terrible things. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Instructing them all. <laughs> what a mess! Oh my god. Also, if you're in a position of power, and you have to use loudspeakers, you should question yourself, because. I wonder if that guy, if Jim Jones was like, had a microphone, I was like, okay, everyone, you have, I would be like, wait a minute, I became that cult leader or whatever. Mm -hmm. As soon as you speak into a mic and it's loudspeakers. I think it's <laughs> and, and so like he was just loaded on drugs. Like, yeah, yeah. Like just slurring into the loudspeakers. <laughs> he killed himself too, right? <clears throat> yeah, <clears throat> but it was like, I think like maybe like a mass and slash murder like yeah, of like yeah. 900 people drinking um uh, was it Kool -Aid? what do you call the the cyanide <sighs> yeah they put cyanide in this in this knockoff kool-aid and, and the people who drank the the kool-aid there's nothing peaceful about this cyanide death they were like screaming in agony like uh and there's just all this pressure to to do it and and having witnessed how much agony all of these people were in uh, Jim Jones, when it was his time to get, he shot himself. He didn't drink the Kool Aid. That's what the whole documentary is about. Oh my God, it's so it's so heavy, and it was like people make jokes about Kool Aid, and you know, drink, drink the, the Kool Aid. Drink the Kool Aid. Oh, yeah, yeah, it and, is and, heavy. You know, That's a lot. So many people. And yeah, is and, that where that reference was, comes from? Drink the yeah, 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 yeah sure, don't, sure. Drink, don't drink the Kool Aid. Yeah. Huh. yeah, drink the Kool Aid is like subscribe to the you know the crazy. Like, I thought it was yeah. like the the Kool Aid. Grateful Dead tour in the seventies, like every drink of acid, because <laughs> no, no, no. that would be more like drink. The no, you want to drink. Yeah, you want to I mean, drink yeah. the wood. That, that Jonestown one was just deeply disturbing and super upsetting. It was not a mess. I had, it was way more of a mass murder. So what, he had 900 people drink the Kool-Aid at the same time. Yeah, and they started out with making the kids do it. Whoa. And then, like, and, and it was just kind of understood that if you didn't make the kids do it and drink it yourself, that you were just going to be killed anyway. So just Because something know. was coming for them, right? It was like, they're coming. Yeah. You yeah. got to do this before something like that. Yeah. Like, Maybe Something was imminent. Haley's comment was coming. No, 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 no. That was that was the legitimately funny one, which was Heaven's Gate. <laughs> Heaven's Gate it was, was like pure 90, comedy. 93, 92. <laughs> that was the one you bought merch for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. As soon as I got done watching the Heaven's Gate uh, documentary series on HBO, I went right on Amazon and bought myself a Heaven's Gate t-shirt. Yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah, because that one was like they're all wearing the same sneakers. They're all yeah. wear, they're all like neatly made up in the bed. Like it was much more peaceful and. And, and like genuinely a suicide where people were just trying to get on the rocket ship, you know? That's the, incredible. The, the spaceship came to bring them to the to the special place. How often does it happen then? Like every every ninety two years? No, no, no. I mean like a mass suicide with a cult leader. Ooh, I don't. I mean, if you if you count Waco and Jim Jones and Heaven's Gate. I think that those were pretty close to each other. Yeah. And I don't I know that we've had someone since then. No, we haven't. What decade was that? What were all those? 94 was uh, Jim Waco. Jones was 70s, right? I think it might have been beginning of the 80s. And then Waco's 90s. Yeah, Heaven's Gate. 
Yeah, I don't know. We didn't have a new one. We, man, we really, we really went there. <laughs> <laughs> we really went there. Um, I, I loved your uh, uh, stand-up comedy for drummers. Oh, thanks. On Netflix, and I, and Thank I love you. The, the, I love that you uh, got the the well-deserved Grammy nomination for that. Thanks, thanks a lot. Yeah, um, I'm psyched I got to do it. It was, you know, targeted to musicians and drummers and uh i i can't you know when i first did it uh i didn't know what i was going to do so the more i did drumming jokes the more like drive i had to do it uh and then all of a sudden i had a special ready to go i think when i did vancouver that that show i think i was doing some of it back then too i'm, uh -huh. I'm pretty sure and what, what i particularly loved about that was that you had these vignettes you know, it was it was a multimedia comedy special. Yeah, and that's uh, like that. That's what I do. Like for, with with my stand up, you know, like I, I film vignettes, like super crazy high level jackass stuff that that crosses the line of what would be allowed on jackass. So it's like yeah. my show is kind of a too hot for jackass, like extra crazy you know forbidden like, stuff that you're gonna like see what? what would be something like having uh medical professionals administer stolen general anesthesia drugs while i'm riding a bicycle <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> yeah oh yeah yeah you know what an epidural is yeah like becoming paralyzed while sprinting mm -hmm. <laughs> like uh oh, my, my legs just got shaky thinking about how yeah, there's uh, it's pr pr pretty, you know, like pretty ambitious, pretty like you know, scary, dangerous stuff, and and um, and then I, I I've, you know, that's my new tour. It's called the Bucket List Tour. It's not a new tour anymore. I'm getting ready to tape the special and wrap it all up. Oh, great. But uh, the Bucket List stunts get um, you know, they, they like built into uh, an act where I tell the stories and. And um, it's all set against the backdrop of my relationship and how these things had implications. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, at, at the end of each bit, I pay it off by playing the video of the bit. So, and when you go play places, what are the crowds like? Um, I mean, I think people. Uh, it, it, it's it's sort of a jackass kind of a kind of demographic. Thing. You know, I mean, I think jackass has been largely. Uh, defiant of demographics yeah so like it's, it's anybody like there's no <clears throat> physical look yeah to, they, some, to someone who would they, 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 i find that as i've become a multi-generational mm -hmm. guy that it's really alarming i feel like uh matthew mcconaughey when he says i get older they just stay the same age yeah. you know like yeah. it's like kind of shocking how young mm -hmm. my audience yeah is and you know like so so yeah it, it ranges a lot but i feel like that happened this time around because everybody wanted to bring their the, now those people have kids and yeah. it's like i don't care how you know old my kid is i'm gonna take him to go see jackass forever and then you have this right. whole new influx of eight to 15 year olds that are going with their parents yeah yeah it's crazy that's amazing but, but when you were uh touring with that show yeah did you bring the vignettes with you on, on tour? And play? Yeah, it'd be like a map if I do accents from around the country and stuff like that. But I don't know if you find this. Sometimes it's hard to get tech to work. So if you have a projector and a screen, sometimes it's not something goes wrong with it. So I, I rely on it not too much. But I do have like an iPad to play music. And then once in a while on the screen, I'll have like... Um, a map of the states so the, so the video vignettes from uh yes uh <laughs> once in a while I'll, I'll have it like but i really have to make sure that like okay do they have a projector does right. it work <clears throat> can someone work it just because I, I don't have a, a like a, a big enough crew to have one person yeah what, I, what made the difference for us was a part of the tech writer and part of the contracts it said like you know you must have this you must have this and if it doesn't work then you are to refund everybody in the audience <laughs> and they will uh, they, and, and it has to be never, tested before we get there <laughs> and they do not want to refund everybody in the audience you'll still get paid but everybody gets their money back Ah, uh, I wish I did that. <laughs> because I think my tone going in is always like, hey, whatever you have, great, we want to make this show. No, no, no. And I think if you go in saying this, the AV has to work. Yeah. 
It's so funny. We've never had. We haven't had this. As, as you say that, I don't want to lean on too much. I'm like, man, my show is like 100%. <laughs> I wish I that's, on that's all we lean on. <laughs> well, because that, that happened to us in Colorado. And it was just like, how is this happening? And then it was like, well, why did this happen? And the guy had to go, you know, they had to go buy a computer at Walmart the next day. And, and that wasn't where it was like. A, when you say this happened in Colorado, this happened in advance of the show. And it was fixed by the time the show happened. No, no. You remember in Colorado? Uh, Denver when we did that show and half of your skits weren't working and you it, it was like we were losing our mind mm-hmm. and you're like yeah I would love to I, play this but the fucking video is not oh, showing yeah I remember that I don't one. I don't remember there ever being a show that uh, it didn't end up working yeah you probably you were so pissed <laughs> you fucking blocked it out of your brain like <laughs> you're Portuguese I mean it was like I, I remember that too because like it was it was fucking atrocious and then it was like okay wow it sounds like we owe people refunds in Denver they got them and it became a whole thing that they got the refunds yeah oh there you go yeah yeah. so so that's what happened (laughs) great what do you fill it with I guess you just keep talking and yeah and yeah, Steve was so pissed. He's like, and this is the part of the show where the video goes in. And I, and he just explains the video. I would do more if I could. That's an interesting statement. I would do more if I could. What if I could tell you that you can do more? No problem. And by do more, I mean be better in bed. Now, how do you do that? Yeah. <laughs> You try Blue Chew tablets, which make you better in bed because they've got the same active ingredient as both Viagra and Cialis, except they cost only a fraction of the price. And if you think I'm kidding about do more, no, 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 I'm not. You ask my lady. She loves it when I chew a Blue Chew tablet. And then about a half an hour later, we we do our thing. And... When you go to bluechew.com and use the promo code Stevo, man, it's really easy to get your prescription because they've got the medical provider on the site. You sort that out and you can get an entire month's supply of Blue Chew tablets completely for free. All you pay is five bucks for shipping. So how about that? It's time to do more in the bedroom and do it for free. Just pay five bucks for shipping for that entire month's supply of Blue Chew tablets completely for free at bluechew.com with the promo code Stevo. Jump on that deal and let's get back to it. Yeah. Or, uh, or I should, because it's also, an, I think the audience likes it. I think so I think too. it's like, instead of looking at one person, they get to see a video and you can, you know, their mind can. I think that, they, that it opens up so much. And, and for me in particular, um, it, it's like providing receipts, you know, so many standups yeah. kind of tell stories that are, are made up or they're just so ridiculously embellished. Yeah. Yeah. And in my case, I tell stories that are absolutely absurd, just implausible to yeah. the max. And then I play a video that proves it all to be completely true. Oh, that's good. That's good. <laughs> Yeah, I know. It's like a common thing, isn't it? People sort of exaggerate the story on stage. Yeah, and that's great. I mean, that's, that's what you're supposed biz. to do. Yeah, that's yeah. what you're supposed to do. There's nothing yeah. there's, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. It's just a Since different... the beginning of sure. entertainment, I'm sure. Sure. Yeah. And, um, yeah, it, it, I just I loved that you did that with that special. No, I, I loved it. I, plus, I get a drum kit up there and a, a guitar and stuff. I think I like... I think I just like having drums around. I like the... They look great. It makes the stage look for me like more full, you know, I just like it. How many instruments do you play? Cause I've seen you on guitar. I've seen you on drums, guitar, drums, and bass. That's it. That, but, uh, uh, that, 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 that's all Motley Crue plays, right? Yeah. That's, that's, <laughs> that, that's, like that's, most the, basic. that's the basic thing. <laughs> like I could do like a chord on piano and make it sound like a chord. But do, you, do you make your own music while just, you're at the house? Just fake, uh, just, uh, parodies of other bands. That's okay. It. For but I, no serious music of my own. Of like, now it's my turn to like. I, I, I I'm not good at that. I'm Wait. I'm good at making fun of genres, but that's it. Yeah. When you say parodies of other bands, do you ever go like full Weird Al? No, not like that. Just because like, I think he's got all the real estate in that. But it's more like uh, for this show documentary now. We did a fake like 
Eagles kind of band, like soft rock, uh-huh. and then like a fake Talking Heads band. So, so stuff that's like a, a concept, you know, like a, that's for the documentary now series. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and that that's current right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But man, so much fun. Where yeah, can people watch that? IFC. IFC. I guess it's like AMC Plus or something. Does that have a? Uh, so that's the streamer is AMC Plus. Yeah, uh, it's been it's been. I think Netflix has it now, but um, uh, we've been doing it for like five years or six years or something. Yeah, that's you and Bill Hader. That's correct. Yeah, and Seth Meyers writes on it. John Mulaney writes on it. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. are you affected at all by the writer strike? Can you because can you explain to me what's going on with that? Because I went to go drive to pick up my laundry and everybody's striking, but I don't know what they're what the, what change do they want to see. I think it's residuals for streaming where I think um, it's pretty high, I think, for some uh, occupations and, you know, if you're on a show. Yeah. But I think the writers are still on an older contract. Yeah, okay. Um, And I used to, you know, sometimes I go, oh, it's not affecting me. I'm still doing my thing. But I think that's wrong. It has affected me in that sometimes I play on Late Night with Seth Meyers and the talk shows were the first to shut down so it has affected mm. me i, I, yeah, I wasn't like, wasn't able to work and so sometimes because like i like to think about work as not work you know like oh i'm just getting to goof around with my friends but then i was like oh no no way that's a real job that i have that i i'm not working at seth myers is fantastic man he is the best he's a great person brilliant writer he's very fast and he's pleasant, you know. Yeah. He's he's great. He's. I um, I loved his joke from his special about being um, a talk show host during the Trump presidency. Yeah. He was saying that you know, it's kind of like being a grave digger during the plague. It's good for business. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> It works great. But, it's good for business, but, it, but, but you don't grim. necessarily yeah. want it yeah. to be happening. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, he's he's great. And he writes on the show as well. Yeah, yeah. And, and and so presumably you said you're home now. Yeah. Um, and that's pr- probably because of the writer's strike. Yeah, I mean, uh, although I mean, you know, if I was working, I'd be. We, a lot of stuff shoots in L.A., but. Um, but yeah, I mean that's because I'm not in New York because of that. Yeah. Right. But so that, we we met you out in front of your office. What, yeah. what kind of stuff do you do all, during the day in your office? Are you coming up with new ideas? Are you constantly just writing? Are you? It's that's just, good for like um, Zoom meetings, right? Like mm-hmm. it's an isolated place. I have had writer sessions there for stuff that uh, me or my production company is pitching, mm-hmm. and then my drums are set up there, so I I could. During the pandemic, I would record drums there for Seth's show, and so, and whenever I do my stand up, I've got all this music equipment, so I just keep it there. So it's not at my house, so I've got to like go mm-hmm. through like gentle little doors. This is like right here; it's like a warehouse, so I could load up a, a yeah. vehicle with all that stuff. How, how much uh, are you touring now with stand up? Medium amount. It's not. I did a tour last year. Was it th- no this year? Uh, it was like a, a week or, or two and then coming up I've got like one-offs uh-huh. like Arkansas Amherst Alaska I'm going up to play there so it's like those you cool. know sort of like little leapfrogging when you go to Arkansas are you gonna do your fantastic Arkansas impression and com- like as opposed to like Louis- that's how you break down the different yeah, yeah. parts of the south uh, I'm gonna try <laughs> but I wanna like brush up on it because if i do it as the whole country it that's a little easier because you know everything sounds so different but if i go to arkansas i better get it right as far as like areas of arkansas yeah i think that i heard you say that you could that you had arkansas like dialed in to the city like one city to the next i I, I say that when i'm if i'm on tour you know for wherever i am I just did some shows in Chicago and I was like, okay, I'm going to do all the areas of Chicago, but I brush up on it before I go. Right. So it's not like it's instantly in my head. It's more like, well, let me just 
make sure I have it right. What's well, like Little Rock would just be Bill Clinton, right? That's where he's from. Yeah, but that's a uh, his is a little bit, his is like a little more um, upper class sort of Little Rock. And then uh, you got a point like this. Yeah. <laughs> they, 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 before him, presidents were doing this, and it was like offensive. And then they stopped doing that, and then they're like doing this, yeah. and it looked weird. So the, he found the middle ground, and that's why he was always. That's good. It is gentle, isn't it's, it? It's not pointing, <laughs> yeah. and it's not like a fist. Yeah. It's that's why he's like, no, I did not sleep with that lady. It's that's like Obama. This. I don't even know who that was. That's good though. You did a good job of it. <laughs> <laughs> so imagine, uh, if you imagine being a politician, you got to figure out a new thing to do with your hands uh, imagine being a politician and having to like lie all day i feel like they just they, i feel like they're so good at answering questions i mean they must take a class in order to they must, it must deflect be. to the the best degree you could possibly yeah. can they must it must also be there it's a, probably a natural talent towards doing that of like avoiding certain subjects and can you imagine how polite you have to be all the time yeah if you're a politician no matter who comes up to you, you gotta be like, yes, thank you. Oh, I heard about that. I'm so sorry. Yeah, it's like being a celebrity and like somebody comes up and talks to you at lunch and you're just like, yeah, have a seat. You're just like, you know, all you wanna do is fucking eat. But, but if you're a politician, you can't say, I just wanna eat. No. They're, you gotta put your sandwich down and- You work for them. You work for them. And when, or if they hand you like macaroni, you're like, oh, this is wonderful, <laughs> thank you. You're, you know, you're, yeah. you're, your grandfather made this? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever get a Donald Trump impression going? No, I, it's not in my wheelhouse. Uh, yeah. Some people are so good at it that I'm like. It, I, I saw recently on uh, the Stern Instagram, yeah. they had uh, they, there's these uh, impersonator competitions. Really good Donald Trumps going at each other. Were they professional or like underground? Like I don't know, but it would. They were good enough. It would be hard for me to imagine that they were not professional. Do you have one? I do not. How, how do you know it's in your wheelhouse? I mean, it's like because you're good at other presidents, and then you're like, you try to it, do Donald Trump, you're like, nah, I can't do that. It just comes to you. Like uh, I was watching Joy Behar, and I thought, oh, I think I could do her. It's like a weird <laughs> voice in your head that goes, you know, where I go. It's just a curse to me. So Sam Waterston from Law and Order, I was just watching him and I thought, oh, I think I could do it. That's how that's how that all happens. It's just my my brain nags at me. When did uh, it occur to you that you could do Joy Behar? <laughs> I was just watching her on The View one day and I was just watching her. I was like, oh, I think I know people like that. Very, uh -huh. very New York. And yeah, she, they, she was always saying like, She's trying to, you know, brush stuff off. So she'd be like, oh, who cares? I don't know. That's, I don't know about that. You know, and something about that, I was like, oh. And then I, I just, we just wrote it into a sketch and it, it worked out. I love yeah. it. Yeah. Are, are there impersonations you've been working on recently? Uh, to, to, I think they're too local. Uh, but I've been trying to do Kai Rizdal. You know, he does like, on NPR, he does like, economics I'm not gonna do it because it's too it's so like also I'm now that I want to be on the spot okay but that's just because I'm in my car and I hear this he talks about economics and I've been doing him um, but no not really yeah I feel like when you're hanging out in your office are you just doing impressions all day by yourself and nobody's looking or <laughs> what are you talking in your head I'm, like I think in my car I do yeah. I think in my car or from at the airport and I hear a, a type of person like there's a way that someone will talk um, uh, I just went to Germany and there's like a just I don't you know I don't know it just it just occurs to me and I'll just do it to myself yeah, but I'm not on a sketch show where I need to present it to anybody I guess I could do it as stand up yeah I feel like because uh, I have such bad OCD in my head where I feel like that'd be a curse for me because I would only talk like that person and I would just be like shut the fuck up <laughs> you, you think so if you went to like say <laughs> if you went to a hotel in Germany and they said to you, um, uh, yes, would you like two keys or one? You think you'd start talking that way? In my head. And I would start doing it to my friends. And they'd be like, what I are you doing? People, people do kind of do that, though, when they go to Europe. All of a sudden they start yeah. talking like that a little bit. <laughs> so yeah. maybe. I mean, when we went to Australia, you know, we were talking like, oh, too easy, mate. 
Yeah. <laughs> but like, it just becomes so fucking easy as. But I do that by myself. Like, sometimes I'll, I'll, I'll watch a TikTok video of somebody with Tourette's. And I'm just like, I fucking say the same shit they do by myself <laughs> playing video games at my house. I'm just like, yeah, it's just, uh, I don't know. I just got to be careful because I can go down a fucking rabbit hole. If I got really good at an impression, I would just get into character all day. I'm just wondering about this Tourette's thing. There's a girl on TikTok named uh, Bailey. Mm -hmm. And she's like, oh, yeah. uh, you ever seen Bailey? And yeah. she's just like, you know feeding her dog her pet and she's just like fuck you fuck you <laughs> and like I sent it to our, to our, our buddy Paul and he's like dude like you say the same shit you know and it's just like you just get so I don't know I love it but I saw this video on Reddit which was like a, a group of people with Tourette's got together and just started talking <laughs> and they were making each other laugh so much because they kept triggering you know they were just they're making each other laugh yeah because I, I could imagine if you had Tourette's and you were in a group of people with Tourette's that it would maybe could maybe get overwhelming and make you sad. Oh, you think, huh? Well, did you I see that? I see that, like, oh, you know, like, we're all here, like, exhibiting this thing that's 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 uh, created problems for us in our, wow. in our life, you know? And maybe yeah. the, the compounding of that would... Yeah, yeah. Did you but see if, that but video? But it's great. I love it. Well, this, this one was that they were really laughing I love, I love that yeah, yeah there's a video of these people that all had the funniest laughs in the world they brought them all together on a oh, talk show that. on a French talk show uh -huh. I think yeah. and they just laughed the whole time yeah. because like this person would be making a weird noise and then yeah. it would just set everybody off I mean I love that kind of stuff and you know when stuff seems fake this did not seem fake I was like oh I think they're really laughing <laughs> yeah of course oh god you guys really I you guys really did things not fake there are so many fake yeah videos and it drives me crazy i don't know how they don't think that you can tell or right. that you can't tell you know like fake stunts yeah and stuff. you because you got approached by some people in the beginning and you're like i'm not faking shit what are you talking about yeah when i started my youtube channel i uh linked up with some people who are very prolific and doing mm. prank videos on youtube to yeah. kind of launch my stuff and we were kind of coming up with what, what were we going to do to collaborate together and and they suggested oh we could just fake it and i was like yeah. I, I had a really visceral reaction to that I said, if I ever fake anything, and, and, and by definition, faking meaning, if I ever attempt to deceive the audience, yeah. you know, that's the, where the line is. If yeah. I, if I de deceive the audience, then everything I have ever it's done like, What's comes, the point? Then, right, know, exactly. They can get that anywhere. Right. It's right. crazy. It's crazy how, how far those guys went, you know. Yeah. A lot of people. Um, when... Uh, when you get approached to um, to be in a movie like Deuce Bigelow or you know any yeah. any of these Ron movies Burgundy, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, like, it, it, is it standard or, or is it usual that they give you the ball to just? Yeah, I would say that's usual. That's like they'll say this is the parameters for how the scene is, but you know obviously go take it somewhere else or if you want to do and I love it and also when that happens I try not to prove that I can you know be funny and like I want to do all these crazy I, I do try to keep it within you know their working hours you know mm -hmm. uh, as opposed to like making a scene into like I don't know I don't want it to be like where it doesn't make any sense anymore so I, 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 I goof around, but I try to keep it. Did, um, did I read that right? That you're the voice of Speedy Gonzalez on Looney Tunes? Yeah, or, or on one, one version of it. Oh, which for uh, like the cartoon in the 90s? No, it would be one from the mid 2000s. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. And so do they give you parameter? Or do they tell you to go like... That was more like, these are the lines. Wow. Um, just because with animation, uh, you know, with something as simple as that, there's no reason for me to like try to like outsmart what they wrote. Right. It's Looney it's Tunes. A, yeah, yeah. So, exactly. So, but with movies and stuff, uh, and Ron, Ron Burgundy was that way. And, but yeah, I, I'm always psyched if someone asks me to do, to be in something, it's the best. Especially you know? when you have creative license. 
Yeah, especially. Because then I got to memorize too many lines, and I, I don't like memorizing too much <laughs> stuff. Um, <clears throat> you're friends with Lance Bangs, right? I am. Yeah. I love Lance Bangs. Yeah, I do too. Yeah. He's like a real. I've known him for a while. I guess you have too, but. I, I've worked with him for many, many years. He's like a real. Uh, he's like cement of like different groups of friends. Like, he really is like the center of like. I just feel like everybody knows him in a really close way. Mm -hmm. Everyone's like friends, truly friends with him. Well, he's at the intersection of comedy and music. Yeah. <clears throat> so, and he's a fan. Yeah. Something about him though, he's just, he makes things happen. Like he did a, a was it his 50th birthday party? Um, he just set up this birthday party and like Mike Watt played all these people. Yeah, 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 showed up and he just nice. does these. Yeah. And <clears throat> just at this movie theater, I don't know. There's something. There's something in the way that, like, he when he invites people, people show up. If anybody listening is not aware of Lance, Bain, oh, I'm sorry. Like, <clears throat> I keep I'm forgetting saying, that we're actually shooting this. The uh, <laughs> the um, guy who's a cameraman on Jackass who's constantly barfing. <laughs> He's barfing while filming. He uh, can't stand the color red. He's very... Can't stand the you can't color say, wait, red? what? Yeah, like he said the one time they made him film, they painted a whole room red and <laughs> made him film in it. And, and what did uh, he, he do? He just he lost his mind? freaked out. That's why the room that we filmed the sweatsuit cocktail in was completely uh, red. And we were all okay. wearing red. <laughs> oh, really? He's got yeah. like sort of wild gray hair usually a beard a little bit Jerry Garcia-ish he has this and he's, the, he's, 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 pretty, he's pretty quiet he's got like a quiet way about him yeah we saw him during the pandemic and he's wearing a mask and you know exactly it's Lance Banks yeah you know? we, we've had him on Portlandia a bunch too yeah we've done a bunch of sketches with him yeah we, we linked up with them last in, time we were in, in Portland, Portland. <laughs> yeah 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 but he's, yeah, he's crazy. truly great did he uh, have anything to do with your um, drummer special? He directed it. There you go. There you go. I didn't even mean to... I had to think about it for a second. I was like, oh, he had everything to do with that special. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. He uh, is a prolific director of comedy specials and yeah. music videos. Yeah. Unbelievable, his resume. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, my brother called me up. He's like in Austin. He's like, "Do you know Lance Banks?" I'm like, "Yeah, how do you know him?" He's like, "Oh, he's he's directing uh, Jay Larson's comedy special." And then you just see him pop up all over, and he's always got his hand in something. He, he's good. He's really and, good. And he's somehow not one of those people who's like, "Hey, man, tell your friends about the right, right. I'm a director, you know, and let them know." None of that. People like, just come to him. Can you introduce me to this person? Zero. He's just he just works, and is just you know. Yeah, I gotta ask you, um, you. You did the voice for Red Dead. Yeah. I can't get in the Red Dead, and everybody loves it so much. I, I just bought PS5, and... The first one or the second one? The first two. Red Dead, the second Red Dead Redemption. Yeah. You, you're not into it. It's, it, it and, and maybe I'm doing this wrong, but I bought a PS5 because like I'm just glued to my phone, and I thought this would be a good way for me to like not look at my phone for an hour. Oh, so yeah, yeah. You're going to switch from one screen to the next? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it's, it, it totally shuts off my brain, and I don't think about anything, and I love it. And it's been really, really good for my mental health, and I know it's counterintuitive because people say that video games are not, but this has been, like, a really great experience. I've been playing, I played Doom, uh -huh. and then I went straight to Red Dead, and it's just such a slow storyline yeah. that, like, I can't handle moving that slow during it. I hear you. That's the only problem Wait, with but it. But do you hook it up to, like, a big screen that you can watch it? Yeah. I mean, it does take a lot of patience. I see what you mean. Because sometimes you're on a horse, you're like... And it's cinematic. It's cinematic, beautiful. And it's real. But I know what you mean. I love it. But sometimes you're going up the mountain on a horse. and I'm In like, the snow. In the snow. And I'm like, I got to feed the horse? Yeah. And I understand. But I'm like, you got to give me a break. You know, like, I should be able to just go up the mountain. Fast. Fast. And, are, are you able to, like, are, are you, like, shooting people from the horse? Like, there's a bunch of that. There's, okay. and it's intermittent, it's intermittent. But it's not like Call of Duty where it's, like, it's fucking on. Or it's no. not like Doom where you're, like, this is, you're walking up the thing, and it's, like, your buddy's yelling. You're like, I gotta go back and get my fucking buddy? And it's, like, just... And it's real distances, and you gotta look on the map, and you're, like, there's no fast way to get anywhere. So you're, like... All right, I'm going to go down through the yeah. valley and like... Okay, good. I'm not the only one. No, I, but I love it. 
but now that you're saying it, um, that is the part where I get quietly frustrated. Because there are some people, I, I was looking up on Twitch and there's like <laughs> a lot of people that do Red Dead. Yeah. And it's like a, it's a great game, but it's just, I, 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 I'm new to video games, so I'm wondering if... There's great characters in it. I mean, I like that it's like calm and you can just sort of enjoy doing small things in that game. So, and I like the challenges are pretty good. They're pretty interesting. Yeah, you can like die of tuberculosis or yeah. your chick cheats on you. Yeah, and there's like all, all sorts of things to collect. Uh huh. You gotta go to the shop and stuff. I know what it is. I had to go up a mountain and the game told me that my jacket wasn't big enough. I've gotta go buy another jacket. <laughs> yeah. So you well, gotta go back into town. I had to go buy uh, yeah. to be warmer. And I'm, I'm like, I'm into the game, but don't make me go back into town. Go back. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, I just wanted to. Yeah. I was reading about Red Dead, and I was like, "Oh, you do the voicing for it." Yeah, I I originally worked with someone on Grand Theft Auto, and the, the reason I did it is because David Cross did um, Grand Theft Auto, ah. and I got very like, oh, "I want to do that." How did he get to do that? So I kind of bugged them a little bit until yeah. they got me on. And there's this guy Laszlo who got me on that and then the first Red Dead Redemption and then this one for real, mm -hmm. the second one. And you uh, you love doing video games. Yeah. W w what voiceover work do you love doing the most? Do you love like the cartoon? Big, big, big Mouth is fun to do. Um, but do you like doing video games better than cartoons or? Oh, I like video games better because it's so uh, unknown. Mm. Like there's a route, if you do an animated thing, there's like a way to do it and you know, Video games are just so so much more mysterious. They don't really need you to be a comedian, or so I like that. I like that it's a little. I don't know. Something about it is like more unknown. That's cool. Yeah. Um, how much Spanish language stuff do you do? A pretty good amount. I did uh, Los Espookies, and uh, I, I try to do a lot. Sometimes I think that my Spanish is really great, and then when I really talk to people who really speak Spanish. I, I realize I'm, I'm just like on the precipice of it. Like I still have to slow down a little bit, but I, I try to do as much as I can. Do you have uh, um, Spanish <clears throat> impressions? Um, no, I, one time Speedy I- Speedy Gonzalez. Speedy Gonzalez, I guess. <laughs> they know they sped that up a little bit too. Oh, really? They speak faster. Wow, Spanish impressions. No, I should have been prepared and, and come up with something. I mean, I'm not trying to make you do a Spanish impression. It was more just yes or no. Um, <laughs> yeah. No, I guess the answer is no. But, uh, <laughs> uh, I mean, I try to do different accents from uh, different parts of South America and stuff. Yeah. Uh, Venezuela is aquí. Uh, uh, Cuba está aquí un poquito más bajo y, y Chile es un poquito así que porque no me dijiste la cosa y México es un, mucho como música de yes. México estamos cantando cuando estamos hablando um, uh, Argentina oh that's too hard for me okay. because they, they have that proper Spanish I, I, it's a weird. It's weirder than that. They, esos así, esos. Yeah, it's they, almost like that. Uh, that dance where you kick. Yeah. <laughs> what? Tang tango is it? Uh, the yeah. paso doble or yeah, that? Yeah, uh, yeah, 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 I think that's it. That's they a tough kick. one though. That Brazil, feels very Argentinian. Brazil es muito bem. Oh, yeah. chimo. Es tan bem. Cantando. Oh, chimo. They're very like expressive. And, Man, that's impressive. I love the, that we made it over an hour in before before you did oh, that. Yeah. I love it. I'm going to tell people. I'm going to say, hey, you guys stick around to the very end. You get the best impression. That's the headlining. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's the headlining. That's really cool, man. Mm -hmm. I, 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 love, I love that, dude. Oh, thanks. I'm, I'm, I'm honored and, and, uh, and moved by that. Thanks. You've been to South America, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I've I've traveled a lot and yeah. and I'm just impressions of are not my thing, man. I've never, never. I bet if you were in a jam and you had to do an impression, you'd you'd be able to do it. Don't Maybe. clowns do impressions of like what like? Uh, don't they tell you to act like somebody when you're trying to I be? Mean, a... Maybe maybe I'll try and get myself into a jam and and do it. We'll put that on our yeah. to do list. Yeah, yeah, cool, man. Um, 
so, so let's uh, let's let people know what you're up to now. Do we um, have uh, do we have any tour dates? Yeah, when does this come out? I, uh, August sixth, I'm in Fayetteville, Arkansas. I think a couple of days later, I'm in Amherst, then Alaska, like a, a Anchorage for a couple of days, um, and then just all over. Like I just book stuff, and I'll just. Where can right. they go buy tickets? Uh, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> this is the best. Yeah. <laughs> just Google some, you. Some, it just works out, and people show up, and it's been great. You know. That that uh, that's, that's great, cool. man. Yeah. And uh, oh, there's a show called uh, This Fool that's coming out soon, uh, which is about some of the um, sort of Mexican-American community in Los Angeles. I'm not in it, but I'm a producer on it, so that's coming out in July. This that, will. That's a, dude, that, that, that's epic. And uh, and how many active shows do you have? Is, is Los Spookies active right now? No, no, that's done. Okay. But This Fool would be the only one that's active right now. Okay. And documentary now, I suppose, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. It's weird talking about stuff because... Sometimes when I see people talking about their own projects, I'm okay with it. I'm like, oh, yeah, they're just promoting it. But every time I do it, I'm like, oh, God, does anyone want to hear me? I think, it's, I think it's, uh, it's impressive and fascinating how many different shows you've been a part of. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Um, that's part of the problem is you've got so many goddamn things going on that you're just, you know. Well, never enough. Never enough. Never yeah. enough. I always just want to keep, you know making something else are you active on social media ish, ish. I'm, I'm on instagram but like i post once in a while just for like shows or tour okay. dates and stuff like that but i'm not i don't know why some people are so good at it i know man i i, I go through phases i can be that's pretty good what it's at like it. for me and then sometimes if a company wants you to promote something there's so much they're like make sure to say this and the, and right, also, right. and then I feel like I'm working and like this now this feels like a job you know who's really good at it is Tony Hawk he's just casual mus muscle memory and and it's just organic and and fun and, and he's got such a unbelievable wealth of just archival stuff that goes back decades and he's always just mining some nugget of gold how hmm. do people do it I don't know I don't know. I yeah, saw a post yesterday where he did a flip holding a glass of milk on the half pipe. Yeah, yeah, that was an that was an older one. That was that, an older that one. TMZ picked up. But That's yeah. pretty cool. That's so. That's, so it, rad. It's tough because how does he go through his phone? I would be like, okay, where did I keep that? Right. Oh, there it is. Is it too long? I don't know. It, it, but yeah. he's got. He's just but you're good at that with the month and the year. You can yeah. ask him any situation, and you'll be like, that was August of '94. Like he's really good at that. <laughs> I don't know, Except for Wild Boys, Wild Boys all blends together. But yeah, man, I, I, th I think it's fantastic. And uh, I, think, that now I think you're fantastic. I'm, I'm always happy for uh, your guys, you and your your guys' success. Well, I appreciate that so it much. It stood the test man. of time. It, it, it's crazy to think multi generational and mm -hmm. still still works. Still works. Yeah. Like the tone of it, everything. Well, th well, thank you, man. Yeah. It's, it's been an honor to have you and Likewise. Uh, continued success. Thank you. Continued success to you. Yeah, dude. Nice yeah, meeting you. Um, did, uh, yeah, I always say this to everybody. If there's anything that you're not comfortable with, just, just no, let no, us know. No, no, no. That's, that's nothing, great. Nothing sent off any alarms. And, uh, yeah, I think that's great, man. Yeah. Fred Armisen, ladies and gentlemen. Is he the most likable dude? so talented and i really think that uh that, that the thumbnail for this episode is uh, particularly epic i don't know man um some of you might have noticed that uh again we did two episodes in one week i mean what can i say we're in love with delivering you guys content i think we might do this for one more week two episodes per week just as an experiment to see how it goes then it'll probably be back to one per week. Now, you guys, I love you so much for supporting the podcast. And I mean that more than ever. Thank you for sticking around to the very end. And let us know what you think, man. Like, we really do watch the comments closely. We really care about the feedback. Now, I'm kind of scared of watching the comments. Everybody else reports to me about them. Ah, uh, but hey, man, I love you guys. Thank you for the support and have a wonderful day.